So the second source of overhead is the control transfer overhead. And that is the context switches that have to happen in order to effect an RPC call and return. And let's now look at the context switches that happen in doing the RPC. Let's say this is the client machine. And on the client machine, the client is making a call. So it is making the call. And when the call is made, the kernel has to say, oh, this client wants to make an RPC call. And we know that the semantics of RPC is that the client is blocked until the results are returned. And therefore, the operating system on the client side will switch from the current client that is making the call to another process. Let's call it C1. So this is the first context which that's going to happen on the client box. The RPC call is sent out on the wire, reaches the server machine, and when it reaches the server machine, the server machine is executing some arbitrary process. Let's call it S1. So when the call comes in, the kernel has to switch to the particular server process that is going to handle this incoming RPC call. So this is a second context switch. So the server machine and the operating system on the server machine is currently executing some process S1. So it has to switch to S in order to answer the incoming RPC call. So that is the second context switch that happens. Then the server procedure executes. And once the server procedure is completed execution, it's now going to send the results out. And when it wants to send the results out, at that point, the work is done for the server. And so the server operating system has to switch from S to some other process S2. So that's, again, a context switch that's going to happen because the server is done with what it has to do. So that's the third context switch. Then the RPC result is coming over the wire, come to the client side, exactly similar to what happened over here. When it comes back to the client side, the kernel at that point is executing some process C2. And this particular result message is coming back saying that, well, the original call sent out on behalf of this client C, the results have come back. Now it is time to reschedule this client so that this client can receive the results and continue with this execution. Remember that the semantic, it's like a procedure call, but it is a remote procedure call. The client is blocked for the result to come back. And when the result comes back, the kernel can schedule the client to continue with its execution. So that's what is going on. So potentially, there are four context switches that are going on. Now let's look at these context switches and figure out what context switches are critical. Now, this context switch is essentially to make sure that the client box is not being underutilized, right? So once the client has made this call till the result comes back, the client box is underutilized, and therefore the operating system says, well, let me switch to some other process that can do some useful work on this node. So that is this context, which is not critical from the point of view of the latency for RPC. Now, when the message comes over here, this context switch is crucial because at this point, when the RPC call comes in, this guy, the server box, is executing some other process S1. So it has to switch to this server process S, which can actually execute the RPC call. So this is an essential part of the RPC latency. And similarly to this context switch that I talked about, this context switch is happening in order to make sure that the server's machine is not underutilized. When the server is done with the RPC call, it's going to send the results back, and therefore we need to context switch out of this server process to some other process so that we can utilize this server box. That's this context switch. Again, similar to this context switch, this context switch is not in the critical path of RPC latency.